So now, ladies and gentlemen, live and in colour, it's Mr. Wayne Lovejuice. The other day I produced a movie Had a cat with an interesting trappy We said that the YouTube algorithm Really aren't that happy If a channel only broadcasts once a week So we decided we could text ya Whenever we've got a piece of news In our new book on the track extra And now, ladies and gentlemen, we've got two old friends come to visit us in the studio today. It's Kara and it's Ralph the Monster. What are you here to do today, Kara and Ralph the Monster? So, Ralph, what's coming up? Book review. <laughs> the book we are reviewing today is Into the Unknown by Danny Robbins. And Danny Robbins at the minute is the poster boy of Fortiana. Uh, he started out doing a podcast called Haunted, which was quite popular. Then he did one about the Battersea Poltergeist, which was even more popular. And the jewel in his crown of podcasts on BBC Sounds was Uncanny, where he talks to people about their experiences with ghosts. It's completely different from most of the uh, breathlessly credulous ghost hunting shows in that he, he takes a neutral ground and he has parapsychologists on and sceptics on like uh, Chris French and Kieran O'Keefe and on the, the other side he has people like uh, my old mate, uh, the Reverend Peter Laws, and the exquisitely beautiful parapsychologist uh, from Edinburgh, uh, Evelyn Hollow. And it's got rightly popular because it is absolutely gripping. Some of the stories he unearths, all of which uh, have never been told before, are absolutely fascinating. And he went on to do another podcast called Witch Farm, which was all about a violent haunting on a Welsh farm and uh, uh, Uncanny is on its I think it's third series now and they did Uncanny Live the stage version of it which once again had all new different um, uh, different cases on uh, but he did it as, as a live thing with uh, Kieran and Evelyn and I saw it in Leicester and it was absolutely great and uh, they uh, all of them very nicely signed my book with little drawings of ghosts which sort of look like Daleks in sheets but the book uh, which come on the back came on the back of the um, the popularity of the podcast once again all new cases he never regurgitates anything and it is wonderfully written when I write a book I tend to write it in a very linear fashion but Danny with his he tackles different cases and he does part of a case and then moves on, does part of another case and comes back to them. Uh, uh, it's almost like episodic as in uh, what a television documentary would be. So not only is it very interesting, it's very, very well written. And there are some amazing cases. He started to tackle um, ufology as well. And I talked to him about cryptozoology and he wants to do it, but he hasn't find, found the right cases yet. But I've, I've said, like, if you need an expert, you know, I'm your man, blow your own trumpet and all that. But some of the cases in here are really, really strange. <clears throat> there is one that runs like an episode of Sapphire and Steel, and it's in um, a little village called Averley. And it starts in the 1970s when a guy is digging in the garden, and bizarrely, he's trying to get rid of an old pram because it's too far to take it away for, to the tip. Um, it's quite a big old pram and uh, the bin men won't <coughs> take it so he's going to bury it in the garden and, it, and he digs down and he hits a stone floor so they get some archaeologists in and it, it's this <coughs> old ruin from um, <coughs> around about the time of the English Civil War now 
when they've dug this place out, weird things start happening. What sounds like a whole herd of a hundred or so invisible horses seems to come thundering and charging through the house. Uh, the girl of the, the family sees uh, Civil War era ghosts. There's a, a hooded monk-like figure wielding an axe that appears. And it's not just to this family. The contagion goes all over this little village. As <clears throat> if it's in this strange supernatural bubble. And like I say, it, it sounds like an episode of Sapphire and Steel. There's another, <clears throat> another one about a, um, a guy called Andrew, who is now a film producer. And um, when he was a boy... Uh, back in the 1970s he lived in Rome and the apartments he lived in um, backed onto a college for English students who wanted to become priests and he was babysitting for uh, the wife of one of his father's friends and he goes into the kitchen and finds all of the plates and crockery taken out of the uh, cupboards and arranged on the floor not broken just stacked on the floor and he can't work out what's going on he puts them all back and later they're back out again and when the husband and wife can't come back the first thing the lady says to him did the kitchen behave itself and she tells him that this has been happening on and on for ages and he uh, he happens to mention this to a couple of trainee priests who become quite worried and take him to see the Monsignor and he tells his story to the Monsignor and the Monsignor takes him to the library of this college and he's the only one with the key and he said this certain room in the library which is adjacent to the kitchen of the neighbouring apartments so it's the same wall I share that's where they keep the books on the Antichrist and he says he comes in there quite a lot to see the books strewn up everywhere on, on the floor even though nobody's been in. Perhaps the weirdest one is about uh, a guy who lived in a little village near Middlesbrough and at the age of 16 he was working as a bar, uh, helping out in a bar collecting the glasses <coughs> and he got a, a taxi home one winter's night uh, because it was snowing so badly the guy had to drop him at the top of the lane because he couldn't get down the lane to where this lad lived in these row of houses in this little village so he's walking back through the snow and he comes to his garden front garden and there in front of the gate is this leathery ball he says looks like a medicine ball that's just lying there and it's not got any snow on it as if it's just appeared and something tells him not to go anywhere near it that it's dangerous and then this ball seems to open up and this tall spindly insectoid thing rises out of it with great thin spiky legs humanoid but almost insect like and with a, a blank featureless face and it sort of stalks off round the side of the house and you think if, if someone's going to make up a story it's so bizarre that no one would think of making that up and it's left tracks in the snow and it later turns out that it's seen by um, a milkman as well around about the same time and a lot of these people that have these um, experiences have other experiences in their lives this guy uh, uh, his family were once followed by this this red light in the sky that seemed to follow them wherever they went and the guy from Rome when he was older um, he was stopping in a, in a convent with his girlfriend and the bed was moving around on its own uh, so it seems to be that they're the focus of something or they they attract things but it's so well written and it's information that's not in any other book because these have been told straight to Danny and it's wonderfully wonderfully put together and it should be on the shelf of every single 14 because it's an absolutely great read and if you've not seen the podcasts he does it's all on BBC sounds much as I dislike the BBC um, it's well worth a listen. Five, four, three, two, one.